This loss is frustrating for multiple reasons. I think a lot of things can be true at once when it comes to really anything. But in football, we are constantly told that we have to you know, believe one narrative or another. It's really hard to go out and try to say, hey, if you know, for instance, hey, you know, Josh Allen's great. So is Patrick Mahomes. It's always an argument. No, Allen's better because of this. No, Mahomes is better because of this. It's it. That's just a, a quintessential example of what sports and sports arguments boil down to. Two things can be true at once. Josh Allen's great. Patrick Mahomes is great. That comes from all over the place, right? To me, I look at this game. A lot of things could have been true at once. Coming out of it, the Bills can still be the best team in the league. Miami can still be 3-0 and and have beaten the Bills and still not be as good of a team as the Bills. Yesterday, do you think the Indianapolis Colts are a better team than the Kansas City Chiefs? The answer is no. This happens week in and week out. And as we know, the unfortunate reality of being a football fan or a fan of sports in general, you can't win them all. And even though it seemed like what the Bills had done the first two weeks out was going to carry through the rest of the year where they were going to beat every single team by 40 points. They were going to put up 30 plus and they were going to hold the opponent to less than 10 every week. That's what it seemed like. Right. And you see it two weeks in a row against good opponents. And, and you know, you're, if you're like me, you drink the Kool-Aid on that. And it's Kool-Aid that I think is worth drinking because what we saw from the bills, the first two weeks, you know, we've seen that before. And I think we can expect to see it again yesterday different circumstances. And I also think when you look at the body of work so far, Miami was probably the best team of the three the Bills have, have faced so far. But when it boils down to this game and what you take away from it, it was beyond frustrating for a multitude of different reasons. And let's go through all the reasons why I think that this game stings as much as it does. I'm sure you all are hurting right now. I was numb yesterday. I was hurting bad. Mainly because I had a high level of confidence going into that one. Perhaps more than I should have. But like I just said, you drink the Kool-Aid sometimes. And going into yesterday, I had just felt that the offense for the Bills was too dominant to be bogged down by the injuries they were facing on defense. Yes, Miami's a great team. I thought they'd be able to score more than any other opponent has on the Bills thus far because of the injuries on defense. But what the Bills are capable of doing on offense against the whole league much less what they've done against the Dolphins the last several times out. I was confident in the Bills' ability to still get it done yesterday. The main reason that this loss is so frustrating is it's because the way they lost was so unexpected. Going into this game... It was expected that if the Bills were going to wind up losing to the Dolphins, it was going to be because of the amount of defensive injuries that they were facing. It was going to be due to the amount of defensive starters that were not going to be on the field Sunday afternoon. The Bills were going up against the fastest wide receiver, wide receiver duo in the league in Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. They call them the Blur Brothers for good reason. Those guys move on like anybody else in the league. And last week, we saw them put up unprecedented type numbers at the wide receiver position. That duo is legit. And you'd be hard-pressed to find a better one throughout the league, much less a faster one. They are as good as it gets in that department. You couple that with the fact that we have seen what Tyreek Hill has done to a healthy Bills defense. He has shredded them numerous times. Dare I bring up the most recent time he shredded the Bills? We know what Tyreek Hill is capable of doing against a healthy Bills D with Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer in the backfield. Imagine what he might be capable of against a bunch of rookies playing in the secondary, against essentially the Bills B squad, their practice squad on defense. Going into this one, we thought if the Miami Dolphins were going to win, it was because they were going to be able to exploit the weakness of the Bills yesterday. And that, of course, was going to be the defensive injuries, the backfield in particular. The defense allowed 14 true points yesterday. They allowed 14 true points. And when I say true points, I mean this defense bogged down by injuries to the point where they were missing more than half their starting lineup allowed 14 points to the Miami Dolphins in which the drive didn't start inside the Bills' own 10-yard line. 
So a healthy Bills defense in week one against a loaded Rams offense. They allow what? 10 points? Last week against Derrick Henry, the former AFC number one seed, they allow seven points. And against the best offense they've faced thus far, and that's the truth, Miami is the best offense this team has faced thus far. This depleted Bills defense only allowed 14 points when the ball was not handed to the Miami Dolphins inside the Bills' 10-yard line. What more could you have asked from the defense yesterday based on the circumstances that they were facing? When you look at what the defense was able to accomplish yesterday, missing six starters, missing the best safety duo in the league, missing their two top corners, a multitude of guys making a massive impact on the defensive line, going up against Waddle, Tyreek Hill, Tua, who last week, look, you could think about, you could think of him the way you want. You know, you, everybody has our narrative on him. You know how I feel about him. I don't think he's a top quarterback, but he's been getting it done. And last week when he, when he had the opportunity to come back against the Ravens, he executed in a way we've never seen. Six touchdowns, what was it, 700 yards? I mean, this was set up for the Dolphins to be able to take advantage of the weakness of the Bills. And that defense, absolutely gutted by injuries, came out and delivered a terrific performance based on the circumstance. Hell, any team in the league, elite defense, weak defense, doesn't matter. If you only allow 14 points on drives in which the, your offense doesn't gift the other team the ball essentially on the goal line, what more could you ask for in a league that is completely predicated on offense? This league is completely offensive reliant. There's a reason week in and week out now, teams are scoring 30 plus at will. And it, there's a reason why every team in the league needs to have an elite quarterback in order to wind up going the distance. Offense matters. And when a defense can force an offense into a game where they can't score towards the, the league average or above, your odds are pretty good of winning, especially when you have an offense at the caliber in which the Bills do. 14 points given up to the Miami Dolphins when the ball wasn't given to the Bills, or excuse me, the Dolphins inside the Bills 10-yard line. I don't know how much more you could have asked for. This was a game where all the Bills had to do, really, in order to win it, was continue to execute on offense the way that they have since last year. Scoring points in bunches, moving the ball at will down the field, avoiding self-inflicted mistakes on offense, and have Josh Allen absolutely ball out. And against Miami, that wasn't a high expectation. And that's why I felt going into the game, they were going to wind up winning it. Not only have you seen the Bills execute on offense the way they have against the, the, the Chiefs, the Patriots in the playoffs, the Patriots before the playoffs, the Titans, the Rams, they also were scoring 36 points on average against the Dolphins. It was not a high expectation to expect Josh Allen and this offense, the way they've been playing, to light it up against the Miami Dolphins in order to supplement a weak defensive unit that they had to put out on the field yesterday. It wasn't a high expectation at all. To me, this loss falls solely on the offense. Yes, were there mistakes made by the defense? Of course, you better believe it. The waddle deep ball, to me, that was the game, and I'll touch more on that later on. And then, of course, the Matt Milano drop pick. If Matt Milano picks that ball off, that's a house call, no debate, and that game's probably locked up. But Matt Milano also made four or five plays throughout that game that were absolutely extraordinary that I don't know if anybody else on the field could make. Nobody else is making hits right now like Matt Milano. If you, if you face Matt Milano in an open field, his, his tackle rate is some of the best I've seen all year. There were some tackles from Matt Milano yesterday where the guy was hitting the hole with no one else around, and Matt Milano made an open field tackle that would just really blow your mind. So, yeah, he did drop the pick six, but he's also a linebacker. They don't usually have the most velvet-type hands, but there were mistakes made by the defense. To be expected, however, they were missing six defensive starters. 
And with that in mind, let's talk about what that defense was able to hold this Miami offense to. 17 carries for 41 yards. This depleted defense held the Miami Dolphins to 2.4 yards a carry. And it wasn't like they only ran it eight times. They ran it 17 times. And they only ran 39 plays. So you're talking just near half their plays were rush yards for the Miami Dolphins yesterday. The Bills held them to 2.4 yards a carry. And then through the air, the one thing I was extremely worried about going into this game, it was Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. Because we know what they're capable of. And I'm like, man, you know, if they're capable of doing that against just about anybody, what could they possibly do against a bunch of rookies and a bunch of guys who really haven't played in a legitimate NFL setting before? Tua goes 13 to 18 for a buck 86. 45 of those 186 came on the one waddle throw. And I'll tell you this right now, that waddle throw never gets caught if Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer are on the field. There were two moments in the game where the injuries wound up completely screwing the Bills. And ironically enough, they wound up being the two biggest errors of the game. The miscue with the snap before the half cost the Bills three points. They were set up in perfect position for Tyler Bass to kick a field goal before the half. He sinks that. The Bills get an extra three points on the board. And then, of course, the Jalen Waddle throw. It was third and 22. The Bills defense had been playing on fire regarding the circumstance. And that was the only score that the Dolphins wound up having the entire second half. It came right off of that throw. Jalen Waddle wide open, splits the two defenders. Ty, uh, J- uh, Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer are shutting that down. That was a result of the injuries right there. Those two plays result in a, in a 10 yard sw- or a 10 point swing. There's your ball game. It's not an excuse, it's just a reality. You got a backup center, and if Mitch Morse is in, there's not going to be an errant snap. Have you ever seen Mitch Morse make an errant snap? I can't think of one off the top of my head. There were two yesterday. One came at a very pivotal time. And then, you know, there was bound to be a big play. They had barely had any all day. It just happened to come at the worst possible time. Jalen Waddell, there he is, wide open. And you got to give Tua credit, man. He hit him right on the hands. There they are, right on the, uh, the brink of the end zone. They score. That's the ball game. So those two plays right there, they boil down to the injuries, and they also wind up boiling down to the result in the game. But with that said, 45 yards was that Jalen Waddle catch. 45 of two was 186. That's just under a quarter of his yards on one throw. And it was the biggest throw. It was a great throw, and it was the game. I'm not discrediting it whatsoever. It was a phenomenal play. It just goes to show you, though, because that was inevitable, right? I, I was shocked that there, weren't, there wasn't more of that. I was stunned that there was not more big gapping plays for the Dolphins in this game. There was one. And it wound up resulting in a quarter of Tua's uh, yards. So when you boil it down, the Bills defense played phenomenal against a team that should have probably ran up a hell of a lot more yards and points against the defense like the Bills put out there. Tyreek Hill has shredded this team time and time again. And yesterday, this Bills defense, who half the squad would not be recognizable by anybody who wasn't a Bills fan, allowed Tyreek Hill to get two catches for 33 yards. He was non-existent. And if I were to tell you, if I were to tell you, if you missed the game and I sat you down, and this is what I had to say to you, you already have the knowledge of what the Bills have done in week one and week two. You have the knowledge of the Bills' injuries, and you have the knowledge of what the Dolphins have done as well. But you weren't able to watch the game yesterday. If I sat you down and said, here's how it all played out. The Bills outgained the Miami Dolphins 497 yards of offense to 212 yards of offense. They had the ball for 40 minutes and 40 seconds compared to Miami's 19 minutes and 20 seconds. The Bills doubled Miami's first downs, 31 to 15. The Bills ran 90 offensive plays. 90. I can't, I don't know. That's got to be, I don't even know, man. 
I mean, that feels like a record. I cannot remember the last time I've seen a 90 clip in the play stack category. That is absurd. The Dolphins ran 39. And you would think, oh, well, the Bills must have had plenty of more drives than the Dolphins. No, they had one more drive than Miami. The Bills had nine drives to Miami's eight. And then what if I were to tell you that Tyreek Hill had two catches the whole game for 33 yards, Tua did not crack 200 yards through the air, and 45 of his yards came on one play, and the Bills also held Miami to 41 rush yards at two and a half yards a carry. You would have thought the Bills absolutely ran Miami out of the building. And they lost. And that is what is the most frustrating aspect of this game. They did everything that I thought that they would have to do in order to win it. They mitigated the air attack that Miami was capable of absolutely using to their advantage to the point of, I thought, putting up close to 30. I didn't think think they were going to break 30 just because um, the Bills offense is really good at maintaining possession. And I just didn't know if they were going to be capable of putting up 30 points, something that other than the Chiefs, who has done it recently against the Bills? I can't even remember. But I thought that they were definitely going to wind up being able to put up points. But they wound up doing everything that I felt pregame, and I think a lot of people felt that they had to do to win this. Light it up on offense, statistically, right? Josh Allen which we'll talk about him later, but if you looked at his numbers, I mean, you would have thought that he, he won the MVP yesterday. We needed Josh Allen to go off. We needed the offense to go off. We needed to control the ball so that the, def- the defense did not need to be out on the field more than necessary due to the injuries. And we had to shut down the Miami offense to some extent. And when you look at the numbers, you would have thought the Bills checked every single one of those boxes. That's what's the most frustrating part about this loss. They did everything that you thought that they were going to have to do in this situation to win it, and they still lost. And that's what sucks. It's not like they went out there and Tyreek Hill went for 300 yards and just absolutely gashed this depleted Bills defense. It wasn't like Tua had a similar performance to to like the one he had last week against the Ravens where he just absolutely went off. It wasn't like they had an incredible run game that we didn't anticipate coming. None of that happened. And it wasn't like Josh Allen completely shit the bed. It wasn't like the Bills offense just just imploded. It it, it was such a strange head-scratching loss, but a loss nonetheless. And I want to make this very clear. This, these are none of this is all these things that I'm referring to here. They aren't excuses. That is the reality of the situation. What is also the reality of the situation is that the Dolphins did what they had to do. Ultimately, I see people saying, "Oh, you can't give the Dolphins credit here. The Bills beat themselves." Yeah, the Bills did beat themselves. But the Dolphins also found a way to win. I think a year ago, this Dolphins team probably loses that game. I think we have a pretty good sample size for that, right? Because Tua got hurt one of the last outings the Bills played uh, the Dolphins, and there were plenty of Bills players out in particular games, and it didn't matter. The Bills wound up putting their, what, half their, their backups in against Jacoby Brissett the last, one of the last times the Bills played them, and they continued to score in bunches. This Miami team is much better. They found a way. I don't know if Tua makes that completion to Jalen Waddle like he did the, uh, yesterday last year. You still had to, it's like what I said yesterday or last or whatever this past week. It's like what I said about last week with the Dolphins. Do I think that Tua proved last week that he is among the cream of the crop when it comes to NFL quarterbacks? No, but he did what I did not expect of him. And that was take advantage of the opportunities given to him. He took advantage of every single opportunity last week against the Ravens to, com- to can, uh, complete that comeback and get the victory. He still had to execute every single drive to perfection in order to get it done. And did it look like what Josh Allen puts out on the field or Mahomes puts out on the field? No. And have we seen that before with Tua? No. Like I said, he had 18% of his total career touchdowns up until last week in that fourth quarter or in that game or whatever. But he still took advantage of the opportunities given to him. And yesterday he did the exact same thing. It was third and 22. And I think a lot of us would have thought there's no way in hell that Tua can convert a third and 22. And it just wound up being the biggest play of the entire game. He put that ball in a bucket to Jalen Waddle, and that was the ball game. 
they took advantage. Bills turn the ball over, gift the ball to Miami inside the 10. They punch it in the end zone. They took advantage of the opportunities given to them. Yes, the Bills shot themselves in the foot more times than you could imagine, and you better believe that they found every way possible yesterday to beat themselves. But Miami still had to find a way to take advantage of all that, and they did. So you have to give credit to Miami. Look at Miami is no joke. And I didn't think they were a joke at all this coming season. I just felt the Bills were on a different level. I still feel that way. But when you look at the circumstance yesterday, Miami is plenty good enough to wind up getting that job done. They're plenty good enough to continue to go throughout the season and be a incredibly tough out. And that's what I think they'll continue to be as the season goes on. What also shocked the living hell out of me yesterday was the, the, the Dolphins wound up winning that game in a way that I don't think we could have possibly anticipated, and that was their defense. Their offense did not win that game for them. Yes, they had an incredible play with Jalen Waddle. I know I've said it a thousand times, but when you look back at the game, that was really the catalyst when it came to the Dolphins' offense. That was it. But their defense was extraordinary. And I'll touch on that in a second. Let's get to some super chats before I forget about them. Steven coming in, and he's saying, no loss is only learning 91 and 94. A lot to learn from in this game, that's for sure. There's a lot to learn from in this game. I'm going to touch on more of that as we go on here because there's a few things that I thought stood out as far as what I'd like to see improved upon moving forward. Johnny coming in. Johnny, good to have you in again as always. Time to start criticizing Brandon Bean for poor running back drafting. I don't know about that because I love what I saw to James Cook yesterday because they utilized him properly. But this run game, good God almighty. I don't even know if you can call it a run game because it doesn't exist. The run game is Josh Allen yet again. And that's kind of a good segue into what, what, I'm, what I'm getting at here because I want to talk about what Miami's defense was able to accomplish yesterday. That was not a concern. Going into yesterday's game, no one was like, oh, you better look out for Miami's defense and their ability to... to uh, bend but not break. That is exactly what Miami did yesterday. They gave up a hell of an amount of points, or excuse me, yards to Josh Allen. They, you know, they they bent. I mean, they allowed them to get down the field, the Bills. They did, truly. The Bills were able to move the ball, but they never broke. They never broke. A couple of times they did down near the, the red zone or down in the end zone. Of course, one touchdown comes on fourth down. They, I mean, they, they were a tough, hard-nosed team on defense all day long. And they got pressure on Josh Allen, unlike I think I've ever seen. Now, of course, it doesn't help when you have me out there playing center and everybody and their mother is getting injured. No, that doesn't help at all. And speaking of which, I'm going to have Thigh Doc come on here in just a bit to talk about those injuries. But that was a major factor. The Bills' offensive line was getting lit up like a Christmas tree in part, of the fa- in part due to the fact of the injuries. Who would have thought that Mitch Morris, out of all those injuries yesterday, was going to wind up being the most glaring? I mean, my good God. Who would have thought Mitch Morris being out of that game was going to be the biggest impact of it all? Not I. And you go back and watch that game. Who stood out the most as far as, wow, we could have used him, Mitch Morse. You got two errant snaps, one in which cost him three points, and that offensive line was getting shredded all day long. It felt like Josh Allen didn't have a second to breathe yesterday. The fact that he was able to pull off half the stuff that he did, hey, I'll tip my cap. But you have got to give credit to Miami's defense. I was not expecting that at all. Extraordinary performance out of Miami's defense, and that really wound up carrying them to the victory. Miami's offense took advantage when they had to. They did what they had to do on the scoreboard to get it done, but this one comes down to what Miami's defense was able to do, and it also comes down to what Buffalo's offense wasn't able to do. I have a full list here of offensive mistakes. You cannot commit this many errors in a game and expect to win when you have half your starting defense missing. Missed field goal by Tyler Bass. I don't know what that was. I understand missing field goals. You can't make them all. It looked like he was aiming for the left wing of the stadium on that kick. I don't know what the hell that was. Absolute shank. Miss from Tyler Bass. 
the Allen fumble. Now, it wasn't just the Allen fumble on that drive that absolutely pissed me the hell off. And I think yesterday, God, I just freaking kicked something. I think yesterday, bar none, Ken Dorsey's worst game so far as an offensive coordinator. I know that's an easy answer because it's their loss. It's the least amount of points they've scored. But it was an, it was inevitable. It, he was having a rough time beating that blitz. The only answer that Ken Dorsey seemed to have for that blitz all day was checking it down to Devin Singletary. That's why he wound up with 95 catches yesterday. That was the only answer. They had no answer. And I get it. I get it. I get it. This offensive line by the end of it was gone. I mean, they quite literally had, they picked me up off the side of the street and had me play center yesterday. So I get it. You know, I totally understand it. It was not helping anything. But neither was some of these play calls. Let's talk about that fumble drive. First and second down were two runs up the gut out of the gun. Oh my God. Channel last year with Brian Dable. This team should never, and I mean never, unless there are multiple scores milking the clock towards victory, they should never be running the ball on first and second down for multiple reasons. One, you don't have a run game. If you had Derrick Henry or Christian McCaffrey back there, okay, fine, I get it, run the ball. I understand, but you don't, and you can't run the ball, and that's why two out of the last three games, two of the first three games of the year here, what do you know, Josh Allen leading rusher once again. They can't run it. So why are you running it on first and second down? You might as well take a knee, and that's what it was because it wound up resulting in third and eight, and you're backed up against your own end zone, so they have to go to the gun. Now, hey, the play was made terrifically, right? The play was made by the Dolphins terrifically. I get it. But Josh Allen and the Bills offense were not put in a good situation, backed up against their own goal line based on Ken Dorsey running two runs up the gut to start that drive off. It put him in a situation in third and long where they were going to have to throw, and that's what wound up resulting in the fumble. I get it. It could have happened anywhere on the field during any play. I understand it. It doesn't make it any less worse that they did those two play calls prior to it. It was just a culmination of how bad that drive was. You had two runs on first and second down for almost no gain at all, and then you fumble it away. And you gift the Dolphins that touchdown. And in a game like yesterday, when you have your defense depleted the way you do, you cannot hand over points. And that's exactly what that was. That's exactly what that was. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, that fumble is just to me is just one of the most disheartening things about yesterday because it just it was pretty uncharacteristic I thought and I also felt that Ken Dorsey thus far has done a really good job of making play calls like the ones that we saw to kick that drive off two runs up the gut I thought that that was done I know that they can't run and I know that they haven't been able to run ever but it seemed like it was getting more creative and it seemed like they were doing a much better job of dinking and dunking down the field to supplement the lack of the run game. I I don't know. I just, if I have Josh Allen and I don't have a run game and I also have injuries on my offensive line, including my starting center, who, as we saw yesterday, might be the most important guy on this entire, on this entire offense, based on what we saw yesterday, why am I running it on first and second down right behind the backup running backup center? Why? I don't know. 